Hey everybody, it's Karen from Waterfall Acrylics. Happy, happy Sunday. Um, today I'm going to show you, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, how to do a painting of nothing but cells. Now you all know I like my backgrounds, so and I like selective torching. Um, but I thought it would be fun to show you how you can get a ton of cells. Again, fingers crossed. Um, but it comes with some caveats that I'll explain. Um, so let me show you my canvas and we'll get started. Oh, I'm crooked. Oh, get over there. That's pretty good. So today I'm using a um, 12 by 24 pre gesso board. It's by Master's Touch. You can get these at Hobby Lobby for 15 bucks, and then with a coupon, they're really a good deal. And I love them because they are pre-gesso. They have like a nice, um, they have a nice tooth to the surface, so it really kind of grabs hold of the paint. And the backs of them, um, they have the bar in the middle. And all overall, I find them to be um, pretty good quality. So um, an alternate if you're looking to paint on wood instead of canvas. So with that said, today's colors are going to be, um, I was on a magenta kick last week, and now my new favorite color is the um, greenish blue U by Amsterdam. This color is gorgeous. I say that about every color, I know, but those, this one in particular is really uh, grabbing my attention. So we have that. We have two different grays today. We have the iridescent uh, silver um, by PBO, all gone. Most of the ones I used today, I'm killing off paint. Um, this is a brand new color by Golden. It's called Light Phthalo Blue. Uh, this is hard to get. It's sold out everywhere, and I managed to grab one. Um, and I'm using the last of it today. Um, I want to show you the difference between this and the permanent light blue that you can get either with the Artist Lofts or the Liquitex. So this is a little dollop of uh, permanent light blue that I had saved um, that was left over. And then this is the new light phalo blue from Golden. So as you can see, uh, two very different colors there. Um, but I'm gonna kill this off because that's just a little itty bitty bit of paint. What am I gonna do with it? Um, what else? Um, for the dark blue, I have mixed uh, two colors together. One is the anthraquinone blue by Golden. Now this is opaque and I only had a little bit left of this and I only had a little bit left of my Prussian blue which is semi-opaque. They're very similar in colors so I've mixed those together um, with the hopes that they're more opaque than not. Um, what else do I have? I have uh, Mars Black. I lost the two. I'm pretty sure it's Liquitex Mars Black, and then Tea White, and then another silver, which is darker than the PBO. Um, it's more like a gunmetal gray, and this is some good stuff. My favorite, Winsor Newton, and this is silver number two. So we have the, the light and the medium um, silver. Where did I lost my, my light silver? Oh, here it is, the cup. And then uh, just tea white as usual. Um, so I'm just going to start layering um, my paints. I'm going to use four smaller cups instead of two big ones to do flip cups. Um, and I'm going to do them this way uh, instead of uh, vertically. So, um, oh, one more color. I'm hoping not to use it because. Um, I was just a little worried about how low I am on the lighter blues. I did mix a little bit of the Winsor Newton powder blue, but when you look at it, it, it looks more purple to me. Like it has a uh, tinge of purple when I compare it to my other blues. Uh, I mean, it's pretty, don't get me wrong, but it's uh, not the palette um, I wanted for today. Uh, if I get desperate enough though, and I'm um, running low on the light blue, I'm going to probably end up tossing a little bit of this 
um, at least one layer into that to make up for it. Um, what else do I want to tell you? So for today, um, you all know from watching my other videos, I think this is video number 12 or maybe 13, I'm losing track. Um, I like background and I like to be able to selectively torch. Um, a lot of people like the fluid acrylics that when they put the cup over and lift it up, it's just an explosion of cells everywhere. Um, I think that's all just a personal preference. One way to get that explosion, however, is the use of your silicone. I use treadmill silicone. I have a drop, and I was very careful, I barely had this open today, to get a drop in my cups. I think I have two in the darker blue and in my uh, bluish green, only because the cups are fuller. The rest have a single drop, um, which works well for me when I just want a few cells and I want more background than cells. If we want a lot of cells, what we're gonna do is layer the silicone um, in between the colors every three or four layers. We're gonna add a bunch of silicone. Now that's gonna be great, again, fingers crossed, for getting cells. Um, my worry with this method is, um, since I'm doing it on wood, when I do um, pours on wood, I tend to resin them and man, this is gonna make for an oily painting. Um, even if this were on canvas, um, this is going to require um, very careful curing. I'm gonna let it cure. I'll probably be moved to New York City before I touch it um, because I'm gonna let it cure for at least a solid month to six weeks, one. And then two, gently wash it three or four times with some Dawn uh, dish soap. Um, and I used to be one of those people that would sprinkle the, um, the baking, not baking powder, oh, I forgot what it's called, in the yellow can, it'll come to me, um, and sprinkle that on and then wipe it off. I found it just makes a mess. It did seem to soak up the oil a bit, but I got the same um, desired effects with the Dawn, so it just seemed easier. Um, anyway, let's get started. So I have a couple cups of my uh, tea white. So just start pouring these guys in there. If you're bored with the layering process, feel free to fast forward as usual. Um, but I do want to show you where I um, put um, some silicone um, in between layers. Oh yeah, I forgot. My pouring uh, recipe for today, um, pre-mixed, so this is, um, I don't know if this has anything to do with it. I'm convinced it's a silicone. So I made a, a batch today. Um, it was, as usual, one cup of PBA or Elmer's glue wall, a cup of Floetrol, and then I added three ounces of the Vallejo pouring medium. And the only reason I use Vallejo, because I think I told you guys before, I think it's really stinky. So not stinky like it's bad, but like how it smells. Um, I'm really, the smell really bothers me of that product. Um, but I'm completely out of Liquitex pouring medium, varnish. Um, I'm out of all my golden products. Um, and I'm hesitant to buy anything with the move coming up. I'm trying to like get rid of inventory of paints and things um, to take with me. Uh, so I'm making do. So that's the pouring medium recipe for today. Um, no water added. Um, my colors all are fairly thin, no trace when you stir them. Um, pretty fluid, nice, nice consistency off my stick. I need to clean off my stick before I test it. Um, so they're all very similar in that regard. Um, am I forgetting anything else? I try to be organized for you guys. Um, got my torch handy. All I need is my spoon, but I'll get that later. All right, got some white at the bottom of the cup, so I'm just going to start. Uh, let me put these in the order I want them in. So I'm going to do I'm going to trade that. Mm, that I 
I've got my backup color if I decide I want to use it. All right, let's get these a little closer. I'm trying to be neat. I made a huge mess earlier, so now um, I saw people were talking about that if, if they work better in a messy environment or neat. Um, I definitely prefer neat. Try not to make a mess. I watched a video that um, I clicked on. It was on Pinterest, and it was um, oh wrong oh, wrong cup. Um, it was this guy, and he was just like throwing paint into cups, and it was splashing everywhere. And I was I was literally cringing. My daughter was like, "Why are you making that face, Mama?" And I'm like, "Oh, I just uh, I just can't operate that way." Plus necessity, you know, in a little kitchen. This is where, you know, we eat and live. So I want to keep uh, the paint uh, to a minimum on other things. So that's what I do. So that's two colors. Hey, Bear, talk to me later after I'm done filming you, okay? Not right now, honey. Three. Hey, Bear Bear, can you take that upstairs, please? I'm trying to film, honey. Okay. Thanks, honey. All right. Uh, one, two, three, four. So I'm going to do some light blue, and then I'm going to add a layer. Actually, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it now. So now I'm going to take my silicone. And I'm gonna put three or four drops on top of this blue. And then just continue on. So I did a little arts and crafts market yesterday. Went much better, a million times better than last week. Made a bunch of sales. The market was only in the morning time. Um, basically, from nine to noon, um, you set up around eight and you start breaking down afternoon to be out of there by one. And I made nearly $400 in sales. So I was tickled pink. Um, let me add my gray, and then I'm going to add silicone and start over again with the white. Uh, so yeah, picking your venues wide, wisely is definitely half the battle. So I'm going to try one last time, hopefully next Saturday, weather permitting. Um, and then after that, I'm going to be in move mode to get ready to get out of here. So, my husband's been a really good egg lately, getting the house ready. He's been like touching up paint and fixing minor things, you know, like the loose paper towel holder that you've lived with for like three years because it's just one of those annoying little things you gotta fix and you're just like, yeah, do that another day. Well, the other day is finally, finally arrived. So, um, he's been doing stuff like that, which is great. Nice greenish blue color. <gasps> it's the bomb. It's so funny is you, if you if you do any shows you're like I want to I want to sell my art but then when you do you're like oh I really like that painting oh that happened to me a couple times yesterday and I'm like what are you doing you can't you can't keep everything so again four drops in the cups and then continuing on with the layering um, 
so it was like I was having uh, debates in my head like you can't if you don't want to sell it don't take it to the market it's bottom line you got to be willing to part with it and one lady the one painting I really liked that um, this woman bought um, she was very emphatic like she came up eh, I'm gonna have to splice together the phone rang in the middle of that anyway so this woman came up and said I love that painting I must have it I told her the price and she bought it I'm like do you want me to wrap it up or anything she's like nope take it it bye you know I kind of ran off with it it was pretty funny but she was very very emphatic all right Grays, got my dark blues, my blues. Whoa, I got a lot of cups, a lot of colors going. I'm gonna stop here. These are pretty full, and this canvas isn't that big. So top it off with this blue, and maybe a little bit of light blue, and we'll forego, we'll forego the black and gray. So that's move these out of the way. I'm glad I don't, I don't need the um, powder blue. I'll uh, put that in a container and save it for another day. It just wasn't the right shade for this painting. I say that just as I'm about to run out of the uh, light blues. Oh no! Oh, we gotta squeeze enough out. Scrape the cut. So hopefully I'll be able to uh, splice together the two videos. I didn't realize it was going to cut off the video if the phone rang. It's good to know. I guess I should put it on uh, ignore or whatever whatever setting that is, so it doesn't ring. Okay, that is it for the colors. Let's see. I don't want to do this. Let's hope this works. Oh, I don't have any, uh, I don't have anything under, under my canvas to prop it up on. Hold on a second, let me grab some cups. Let's get this popped up. Got it all nice and taped underneath. Trying to keep it neat. Get these guys out of the way. It is a rainy, dreary day here, which I'm kind of happy about. Because I'm going to finish this video, put this away to cure, grab a little dinner little barbecue for dinner and I'm gonna sit my butt on the couch for the rest of the evening it's going to be bliss okay that's better I was like what's wrong with this picture all right cup number one see if I can do this without splooging too bad that's pretty good actually now to me I can already tell the difference from my regular pores I mean, it sells up without even doing something, just by splooging it on the canvas. Look at that. Um, so, if you like a lot of cells, I'm hoping this is the this is a, a method, one of many methods. There's, I think now there's a couple uh, pouring mediums like the Vallejo, like the um, Deco Art. Um, like the unicorn spit, which sell up um, a lot easier than the traditional pouring mediums. Um, I'm still partial to my backgrounds. I don't know why. I just am. Um, all right, let's see what happens. Up, up, down. There we go. Oh, let me catch some of that color there. If you watched any of my other videos, 
you can see that moving and growing right away. It just automatically sealed up instantly. And they're still popping up and moving around. All right. Crack number two. That a second. Number Still got some paint left, especially the first cup. There's a good eighth of a cup of paint left there. And number four. Oh, that was the best flip yet. Lots and lots of cells. So my favorite cup right now, obviously, is this one because it has the least amount of cells right here. And I can see some background, which makes me all happy. Um, I think that'll go away when I tilt, though. really like this color combination a lot a lot a lot a lot and I'm glad I didn't use that powder blue I just don't think that color would have gone with this palette all that well so last one let me stick my finger in this there's all the blue green Losing some color down here. Let me run this off. And let me do this right here. That move about a bit. Um, the reaction also with the silicone, uh, you'll notice too that some of the cells grow bigger or the paint just moves around on the canvas bigger because it's reacting to the silicone. To the oil um, which I normally don't get when I do it my uh, preferred method in my earlier videos uh, but I do love the colors of this I gotta say so let me grab my my favorite spoon oh it's not a bad one. It's a regular spoon so it turned out uh I don't have much much on my tarp, so that was a uh, pretty uh, glad I stopped my layering in my cup when I did. It was a pretty good estimate of paint. So let's talk about that for a second and see if I can do the math in my head. So four cups. These are nine ounce cups, and I had them filled up about two thirds. So let's say. Let's say seven ounces. So it's 28 ounces of paint uh, in your cup to cover this 12 by 24. And I only have a little bit of black and a little bit of gray left. So probably like a half an ounce, maybe an ounce of paint if you're using two, four, six, six colors plus white. Um, I don't know if that helps you guys. Um, I usually just eyeball it now. I've gotten pretty good at 
looking at the canvas and looking at the cups and judging how much I'm going to need. All right, I think it's done uh, floating around. Still a little bit here, it's still moving. But time is up, Mr. Painting. Let's see. Let me just come off my end a little bit because it just needs a little, a little bit in a couple spots. Give it some help right here. Roll off. Give it some help right here. Roll off. Let me go. Let me go over this way a second. Toward you all. Oh, hold time out. I have a lot of empty containers here, but I don't want to spoon uh, paint. Let's see, empty, empty, empty. A little bit of gray left. Empty, empty. I did kill off a lot of paint today. A lot of containers, empty. A little bit of that one left. stretch some of these out there's a lot um did i mention the tooth of these canvases like there really is a lot of tooth so a lot of times i'll do this just to help it not stick so much um much more so than a regular canvas for sure so let's just give it some help right in there See, now it wants to roll off. So stop. And go. And go this way a little bit. I don't want to spot my cups making noise. And back toward me. Try to keep the integrity. there just so it doesn't look wonky. Wonky. Wasn't wonky a great word? Such a good word. Check out my sides. Missing a corner over here. Where's my spoon? Line these up here. Oh, no, that's not the right color. I'm not liking my colors to match. I gotta get the right color. So, oh, no, I see right there too. You need the gray. That matches and looks nice. How's it look on your side, guys? What? You can't tell me? Oh, damn it. I forgot to do a live video again. One of these days, I will remember and like post something so y'all know when I'm gonna do it. Today would have been perfect too. My bad. Uh, as you can tell, I haven't touched a torch at all. Don't think I need to. I will just in like a spot so you can see how easy that if you wanted, I don't know why you would, but if you wanted to add even more cells or you found a blank spot in your painting, you can still torch. I'm just gonna reach over here. The one corner. Oh, another more spot right here. Looking good. Wow, that's busy. It's pretty busy, but it's cool. I do like uh, this here, here, I think I want to tilt a little bit and try to get this dark section. It just makes for a nice rocky, rocky road composition. I might have to call this one like Rocky Mountain High or something. 
Just a little bit, that helps. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot I can do. Honestly, there's no, uh, there's no background. That's the thing. A couple of little spots. So let me show you what happens if I um, break out the torch on this. But anyway, that's how to get a ton of cells um, with minimal effort. Now, I'm going to probably say, I know I said this before, I'm going to play like a broken record. Um, and I don't know if this is a popular sentiment or not, but there are cells and there are cells. And with this one, what happens is, um, they don't always make the nice color within a color. Sometimes they have like, what I call like, um, a thin skin over a cell. And that that's happened a lot in this painting in particular where it's not a pure cell, where it's pure color. That's always my goal. Like some of these are really nice. Um, let me pick out one. Like this guy here. So it's like white and it has a ring of blue and then light blue. And then you could tell it has some gray and blue, but it has like that skin of something over it. And if I torch it, it's not gonna go away. It doesn't matter. So what I look for in cells, even though this one's slightly bent, where it's just a mass of true color um, in a circle. So that's something else to consider. On the plus side, this type, that type of painting with the, the silicone layers, it does something else that's actually really cool. And I wish I could figure out how to get it to do it more. And I will zoom in on it for you guys, but it makes really cool lacing. And I know you can't see from where you're watching right now, but right in here in my background, there is lacing with the, um, the number two gray with um, blue lacing, that's amazing. So pros and cons to this, um, definitely, uh, definitely way to get cells. So let me show you what happens if I torch. So these long lines here, I think in my traditional paintings, these would have made my little caterpillars or worms or whatever you like to call them, the snakes, I call them caterpillars or soldiers. Um, but in this painting, they just spread out um, and made long lines. So I'm gonna torch right there just to show you um, that you could still torch this type of painting. I'll go right in here and right in here. And watch, it didn't do anything. Ah! Say, uh uh, sucker. I'm not gonna do it. Oh, there it goes. I was gonna say, because usually this torches up. So it will torch up. You're gonna get baby cells like right there. See that? What I just did? So I just took away any sort of background space I had, but it's. It is Rocky Road, folks. So. I don't see anything else I want to do. Um, I'm pretty happy with the percentage of colors on the canvas. Like it's weighted fairly evenly throughout. So I'm gonna call it done. Okay, go have a uh, go have some barbecue. So ta -da! let me uh, get the camera down and zoom in and try not to turn off the camera. Let me see. Ha, ah, there I am. So let's go to the painting. So this is what she looks like up close. Just lots and lots and lots of cells. There's the one. Let me see if I can point it out to you. I don't know if I can see it, but right over there is the ones I was talking about that have like that film over it. Um, and then up here in the gray, where'd it go? I'm going off, I'm sorry. Let me see. I don't know if you can see the lacing because I'm having a hard time looking upside down at the camera to see um, the lacing. 
Let me just zoom out so you can see the whole thing. Where am I? Hmm. That's pretty much what she looks like. Um, once again, thanks for watching. Have a great Sunday, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.